Few things in the Shawshank Redemption are so misunderstood as the hollowed out Bible in which Andy hides his rock hammer. I believe in two things, discipline and the Bible. Here you'll receive both. Given the warden's expressed love of the book, it might seem Andy has rejected the warden's faith for the physical salvation found in this tool. Wisecrack's interpretation is a case in point. The salvation lying within the Bible is not God, but rather Andy's choice to embrace hope and liberate himself by any means necessary. But to truly understand the symbolism here, we need to see all the connections made in the film. The Bible's discovery is linked to this earlier scene in which the warden, having Andy's cell search, discovers Andy reading the Bible. Pleased to see you reading this. Any favorite passages? Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh. Mark 13.35. Always like that one. Before leaving, the warden hands the Bible back to Andy, telling him, Salvation lies within. The irony is biting when we realize the rock hammer is there inside the Bible. But this isn't all we're meant to see. In the very next scene, Andy is called to the warden's office, where he notices the sign which reads, His judgment cometh, and that right soon. The message appears to refer to the warden, whose sign it is, and whose job it is to mete out justice. My wife made that in church group. Later we learn of a safe behind the sign, and it's here the warden has Andy keep his books. It's thus to this safe and sign that the warden looks when he realizes Andy's exposed his corruption. In this moment, we're meant to see that the judge of the sign refers not to the warden, but to Andy. The same reversal of meaning is found in Andy's quotation of Mark 13.35, Watch ye therefore for you know not when the master of the house cometh. Which is significantly linked to the sign by the word cometh. Just as the judge in the sign appears to refer to the warden, so too does the master of the house. At first it appears Andy is saying to himself that he needs to be aware because he doesn't know when the master of the house, the warden, will show. But in the end we see that it's Andy who is the master of the house and the one who has warned the warden to beware. And this tells us something even more important about Andy. In Mark 13, 35, it's Jesus who is the master of the house. And the cross-stitched sign likewise refers to God, being a quote from Ecclesiasticus 21, 5. My wife made that in church group. Thus, in the final judgment, the film places Andy in the position of Jesus. But surprisingly, Jesus isn't being replaced by Andy. It's Andy who is identified with Jesus. Like Jesus, Andy is born into the prison world uniquely free and innocent and offers his fellow prisoners rare and extraordinary reminders of the outside world. Andy's first miracle, like Jesus's, is an abundant supply of alcohol. Man missing on tier two cell 245! But it's Andy's escape which offers the clearest allusion to Jesus. Lord, it's a miracle! Man up and vanished like a fart in the wind! The guards go looking for Andy's dead body, but instead find his tomb empty. Oh my holy God. Like Jesus, Andy is alive, living a new and more powerful life in the world beyond, even as he becomes the judge of this one. In the same way, the rock hammer hasn't replaced the Bible, but is symbolically defined by it. We can see this in the source material from which Frank Darabont, Shawshank screenwriter and director, got this idea. While the Shawshank Redemption is an adaptation of Stephen King's 1983 novella, it is also equally an adaptation of Clint Eastwood's 1979 movie Escape from Alcatraz. Among the many unique details found in the 1979 film is hiding the means of escape inside a Bible. And while Escape from Alcatraz is itself based on a book, and a non-fiction one at that, Frank Morris hiding his tool in the Bible is the invention of the screenwriter, and thus offers a hint to the film's creative theme. The Alcatraz of the film, as with Shawshank, is an allegory for life. Frank Morris is born naked into this prison world, but comes to believe in that something inside him which cannot be locked up. What's the flower? That's something inside me. They can't lock up with their bars and wolves. In other words, his spirit over and against his body. The historically accurate escape at the end of the film is thus colored with the idea of a soul escaping the body at death. Frank Morris and his companions fly across the waters to Angel Island, leaving the shell of a body behind. By connecting the tool of escape to the Bible, the film further suggests this as a spiritual escape. The Bible defines the spiritual meaning of the rock hammer. And he hasn't ignored the Bible. He knows the Bible as well as the warden, if not better. He's the only one who actually opens it. Like the Bible, the rock hammer is the means by which Andy opens a portal to the outside world and shapes the things he finds in this world into new creations. You want to explain this? It's called a rock blanket for shaping and polishing rocks. A little hobby of mine. Andy's devotion to the transformation of rocks is like his love and transformation of men, who he refashions like these rocks, but through books instead. I need it so you don't forget. Forget? Yeah, forget that there are 
places in the world that aren't made out of stone, that there's a, there's something inside that they can't get to, that they, they can't touch. Andy appropriates the story of the Bible as his own. It's not coincidence that the shape of the rock hammer begins at the book of Exodus. This is the story of Moses and the children of Israel who escaped the bondage of Pharaoh across the sea to the promised land. Exodus also points in the Bible to the death and resurrection of Jesus who set the captives free, preparing a new home for them in heaven. This is the true meaning of the hollowed out Bible and the Shawshank Redemption. Any questions? <laughs>